game number three here, Iowa 23, Penn State 20. And it, so so tell me this. There was a lot going on yesterday. How much of this did you watch? It was on a TV the entire time. I, I Exact same here. I, I, you guys see I've got three TVs behind me. I've got one up here in the corner, and I've got three computer monitor. well, four. Uh, I didn't turn on the other laptop yesterday. Didn't need to. But I, I had games on basically every monitor all day. And this one I paid close, close attention to because Penn State looked good early before Clifford lost, but before they lost Clifford to the hand injury, right? And I don't know what's going on. Hey, by the way, John, uh, John Geelan jumped in, said, is Rattler done? Probably as the starter at Oklahoma. I don't know how no, you parade I, him back out there. Nope, nope, nope. Let me, let me, because he has a, because he has a head coach that is soft as hell. He is going to try to play this two quarterback thing so he can salvage Rattler's ego and because he's afraid of transfers. He wants to take all the transfers he can get, but that man is terrified of losing transfers. It's yeah, you you might be right about that. Um, I've lost a lot of respect for Lincoln over the last two years. This is a guy that I thought was a great, great head coach. And now I, I think he's a good offensive mind, but but this dude, this dude's weak mentally. You you might be right. Let's move back into this Iowa Penn State game. This it, Iowa outscores Penn State thirteen to three in the second half. Mike G said Phil Parker is the best defense coordinator in college football that no one talks about. Go Hawks! Yeah, we so in our preseason preview for this team, we talked about that. Yep. Phil Parker is fantastic. Like he he every year it's all oh, but they lost this and they lost all these guys. But they just develop them and they bring them on up again. They bring in new ones every year, and it's unheralded guys that just work their ass off year after year after year, and and they play to a system, and they play well. Again, tell me if you've heard this one before. Uh, Iowa wins the turnover battle, 4-1. to Like, I mean, four interceptions for Penn State. This, the Roberson kid, like, I feel so terrible for him because he was not ready for this situation whatsoever. You can't. To get thrown in in the middle of a game is a tough situation already. To get thrown in against probably the second, well, I don't say probably, it, I think it's definitive, the second best defense in all of football right now, like that, and it's not just a, a good defense. This is a hawking defense. This is a defense that absolutely gets after you. And if you make the slightest mistake, the error of mar- margin of error is just zero against Ohio, uh, uh, Iowa, and and they're going to take the ball away. They're going to take it away. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. John said, "Why was there such a huge gap between Clifford and Roberson?" Moment aside, the guy sucked. So here's here's the issue. Uh, Roberson is a young guy, but he was never supposed to be the backup this year. Uh, Will Levis was supposed to be the backup, and Levis transferred to Kentucky, and Kentucky. you can't blame him because like. Kentucky six and zero, like they're doing well. Uh, right, yeah. Right now, that looks like a hell of a transfer. Yes, Roberson seven out of twenty one, thirty four yards, two interceptions. Like, did not play well. He had ten rushes for twenty seven yards, but their offense was non existent with him in the ball game. It was just there was nothing there. And the issue is, you you never play a game expecting to have to play basically your third string guy, especially on the road in that environment, and. Sometimes the environment is just too big. Like, we have seen Bryce Young, going back to Alabama, Bryce Young, in certain situations, has looked like the best quarterback in college football. You put him on the road with a loud, hostile environment like that against a really, really good defense that can confuse you, and nobody's going to look good in that situation. No. There's and not that's a quarterback also on with earth that the can do greatest that. weapons in the world yes. on his side. Yes, and and Penn State's got weapons. They got some uh, Dotson, yeah, but you know, but, but it's but it's not close. But it's not close. You're right. Uh, so this like to expect anything out of Roberson in that situation, I, I I don't fault the kid. I don't fault him. It's not his fault. Like they, I will tell you this. Penn State spent more prep time this week, and I know this from people that actually work with Penn State. They were they were ready for almost every situation, but they knew going in that you cannot lose Clifford. You could lose almost anybody else on that team, but you cannot lose that guy because you're not going to be able to build a big enough lead to to sustain something like that. Like it's it's just not. And Iowa field positioned them to death in that second half. Just played the. I mean, Kirk Ferentz. We already know he's a fantastic head football coach, but what he did in that second half was 
gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. The punts and, and the way that he played the game was was perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, I... Late in the game, you get that interception, like... You get the interception late, late, late. I thought that they were going to try and tack on, you know, some more, more points there. I was... I don't know. It, it the, the whole the whole thing was the whole end of the game. I expected something different, I guess. But why would you do anything different than that? Like it, just pin them deep, it, make them try and, and do something. Uh, but they they get that late touchdown. That, by the way, the touchdown forty four yard like chunk play. Uh, Brian Ferentz as an offense coordinator is very surprising. Very surprising to me. Uh, John said Roberson's been there for three years. <laughs> uh, Akron versus uh, Bowling Green. Akron's third string guy scored twenty eight on Bowling Green. Yeah, that's that's Bowling Green. That's a, that's a different story there. Roberson, like he's just not as good a quarterback as, as Clifford or Levis. Like he's a third string guy at Penn State. I don't know what you want me to say. Like I, <laughs> I don't I don't expect big things out of a third string guy going up against Iowa's defense. I think that's it. So anything else you want to hit on on that one? No, it's fine. All right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.